Okay, aloha mai, Kako. Greetings. Uh, thank you so much for this opportunity to share a little music and a little story with you as well. I even wore formal attire. That's black on black aloha shirt. Right? <laughs> uh, this little uh, project I call the Ultimate Recycling Project. Um, a little over five years ago, <clears throat> we opened Bing Concert Hall. How many of you have had the opportunity to see performances there. Oh, good number of you. If you haven't, you really need to treat yourself. It is one of the most glorious acoustics for orchestral music, choral music, uh, chamber music. <clears throat> we are really lucky to have this uh, facility for the teaching of our students and for sharing music with the greater community. We opened Bing Hall uh, a little over five years ago in January of 2013. And towards the end of the construction phase, <clears throat> I was there the day that we started laying the floor, the stage floor of Bing Concert Hall. And you can see it's actually, it's boards uh, of the floor that are sitting on top of kind of a giant system of braces or ribs. Unlike a lot of rooms, like this room, where the floor is just glued down onto a concrete slab, that actually sits on a series of braces and underneath those ribs or braces is a giant cavernous open space. So the floor acts very much like the soundboard of a piano or the top of a cello, and it vibrates. It's really live. It's amazing, actually, to, to make music on it and feel the floor vibrate. Uh, the material for the floor <clears throat> is Alaskan yellow cedar, which is actually not a cedar. It's actually a sycamore, but it's, it goes by its uh, commonly referred to name, Alaskan yellow cedar. It's a very soft wood. It's stiff across the grain, but it's quite pliable. It's very similar to uh, the wood, for example, that Antonio Stradivari used for the tops of his violins, or Steinway and Sons uses for the soundboards of their pianos. Those are spruces, but <clears throat> the sonic characteristics are very similar here with Alaskan yellow cedar. You can see uh, work, uh, workmen there installing it on top of those braces. You can also see along the left-hand edge there a uh, kind of a radius edge of the stage. So just in front of the front row of audience seating, the stage is curved. And when I was in there the day we started laying the floor, I noticed them sawing off the edge of the stage to fit that radius uh, front of the edge of the stage, the curve. And I asked one of the project managers, um, what are you going to do with all that wood you're cutting off the edge of the stage? And he said, throw it away, and I thought, what? <laughs> this is instrument grade, gorgeous wood. It's quarter sawn, that is the way the logs are cut, optimize the evenness of the grain. Uh, I mean, this would just be tremendously expensive wood to purchase, and it was for the, the stage floor, but to throw it away seems such a shame. So I took as much as I could of it, and, uh, well, I got permission, you know? I took as much as I could of it, and I put it in the trunk of my car. Unfortunately, I only have a Honda Civic, so it has a tiny trunk. If I had, like, a Tesla, I could have taken a lot more. But um, I took this wood, and I commissioned three instruments to be built from it. One is a tenor ukulele, built by Rick Turner, who's a luthier uh, just down the, the road in Santa Cruz. And one is this instrument, which I'll come back to in just a moment. And then I commissioned a guitar, a cl concert classical guitar. Four years ago, I commissioned it. It's still being built, actually. So it's not done yet. And then I commissioned this instrument. This is a gilele. That is a tenor ukulele-sized guitar. So you'll notice it has six strings rather than four, like a ukulele does. But it has the short scale length and the body size of a tenor ukulele. The top of this is from the scraps of that floor. So there are actually four narrow pieces across the top of this. There weren't any pieces of wood that were wide enough to you know, do just two pieces book match, like most uh, guitars would be. The back and sides are Brazilian rosewood, uh, which is a very hard, uh, very dense, reflective wood from uh, Amazon rainforest. And in a nod to the fact that I, I play mostly all Hawaiian music these days, uh, the binding around the side, the top and the bottom, and the strip in the back is koa, which is, of course, an indigenous Hawaiian wood. So that's just a little bit behind the history of this guitar. And um, I'm going to play for you a piece 
written by, let me see if I'm tuned up here actually. I'm gonna play for you a piece written by one of Hawaii's most revered songwriters, who also happens to be the, happened to be the last reigning monarch of the sovereign kingdom of Hawaii. You know, Hawaii was a sovereign nation until 1893 when the government was overthrown by uh, U.S. business interests backed by the U.S. military. It was an illegal overthrow. It was acknowledged as such by President Grover Cleveland after the fact. But the last reigning monarch, Queen Lily Okalani, was a marvelous songwriter. She has such a gift for melody. And uh, this is one of her most famous songs called Sanoe. She actually wrote this before she was a queen. She wrote it while she was still a princess. And it's a love song, and she wrote it in collaboration with a very dear friend of hers uh, she called Kapeka, who we know now to be her friend Elizabeth Sumner Auchuk. So this is Queen Lily Okalani Sanoe, played on a gilele that's made partly with wood left over from Bing Concert Hall. <laughs> 